This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. In this episode, we're going to take the iconic poster of Back to the Future and transform it into this. Welcome to LEGOFI. In LEGOFI, we take well-known movie and TV posters and create LEGO versions of them using Photoshop. The truth is, people have been LEGOFYing posters for years, but I wanted to see what actually goes into making one of these LEGO posters. So, for the very first episode, to kick things off, we're going to recreate the poster of one of my favourite movies of all time, Back to the Future. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. I recently purchased and built the incredible Back to the Future DeLorean LEGO set, and... Yeah, this thing is awesome. I'm actually going to take some snaps of the DeLorean and use it in my poster. With all that being said, there's only one thing left to do. Let's run. Right, we've compiled our assets and the document is all set up, so let's get this one started. I think the aim here is to mimic the original poster as best we can, at least in terms of colours and lighting, but we'll most likely have to take a few liberties here and there with things like composition, since the dimensions of our LEGO subjects will be quite different from their real life counterparts. But I'll do the best I can. Our first goal is to establish a background, which is fairly simple in this case. A nice sunset, a road and a small hill. I'll be having a close look at the original poster throughout the creation process, just going by eye when it comes to things like matching colours. I found a suitable road image at a nice low angle, which also has a hill, so we can start cutting that out and altering the size and shape. And let's just darken that up with an exposure adjustment layer. We'll then drop in some street lamps, I don't think there's much we can do to legofy certain aspects, but I'll add a few clear Lego bricks for the light sections, even if no one's going to notice. Let's just darken up the sky a tad, just to better match the poster, and then we'll stretch the road to fill in this gap. Now, I don't know if you've ever looked hard enough at the original poster, but as great as it is, there's definitely something funky going on with the DeLorean in it. That front end just doesn't quite look right, does it? So I had a quick look into it and one explanation I read was that this poster was designed when the teaser dropped and they didn't want anyone to know what the time machine was at that point, which kind of makes sense. Regardless, I won't try to mimic that and we'll keep our car whole for the most part. So as I mentioned, I took some pictures of my own Lego DeLorean that I built and we've just got that into position and let's paint in some shadows and darker colors to conceal the left side and begin to introduce some orange highlights to the car panels. Let's take a quick break to hear from the sponsor of this video, Invato Elements. Invato Elements has been my number one go-to place for stock assets for quite some time. We're talking stock photos, videos, graphics, music, and so much more. No matter what you're looking for, Invato Elements opens up a world of creative possibilities for your design projects. Having access to high quality overlays is a huge time saver when working with photo manipulations. In Invato Elements, you can simply search the graphics library for the overlay asset needed. In this case, we need some smoke overlays. I'm also going to need some fire, but I'll need this at a specific angle. Choose from a huge library of 3D assets, find the angle you need, and download as a PNG or PSD. With Invato Elements you get unlimited downloads, download all the assets you want with one subscription. If Invato Elements is for you, they offer 50% off an annual subscription. So rather than paying $33 per month on the monthly plan, you'll be paying $16.50 per month on an annual plan. I'll drop a link in the description below. There needs to be a lot of intense light given off from inside the car, so we'll create an exposure adjustment layer and a colour fill layer to create this bright glow on the car as well as spilling out onto the road. Okay, cool. Now it's time to build Marty. I've collected the body parts, so now we just need to piece him together. Oh, 
Awesome, okay, let's use some color fill adjustment layers clipped to the figure just so we can match the outfit colors. He's wearing a lot of layers, so I definitely got lost a few times trying to manage all the Photoshop layers. But we're slowly building up the different colors and sections. And then the fun part, drawing in some outlines to give the clothes some detail. And poor fella doesn't have a face, so let's get on that. Just using a hard edged brush to draw these in. Perfect, I think he looks shocked enough. And let's throw in some glasses real quick, just to distort those and change the color. Right, that leg needs to be partially inside the car, so we'll have to warp that and distort it slightly. Then match the lighting coming out of the car. Let's paint in a few highlights on the edges. And then just painting in a few shadows, thinking about the direction of the light and where shadows might be cast from certain body parts. That hill is a little too large when comparing it to the original poster, so let's erase some of that. Then we'll add some lights to the street lamps along with some lens flares with the layer mode set to screen. We've got this nice smoke overlay from Envato Elements which actually fits the same style of smoke from the original poster very nicely. Now for some light rays. For these I typically use the polygonal lasso tool, apply some Gaussian blur from the filters menu and set the layer mode to overlay. Then simply use a large soft round brush to fade those out. All right, slowly getting there, starting to look a little bit more like the original poster now. Hmm, okay, the fire trails. Definitely a tricky part. It's going to be difficult to match the placement of the main poster. That's a tight squeeze through those little legs. It's one of those times where we may just have to take some liberties and go with what works best for our setup and composition. I've also decided to go with realistic fire as opposed to Lego fire, which wouldn't look too great, I feel. Now, if you're familiar with my art, you'll know I love to add grain to a lot of my images for that cinematic feel. You can do this in camera raw filter at the end, but I prefer to have a little more control over it. So first, create a new layer and then fill it with a medium gray. Then go to filter, noise, add noise. Select uniform and check monochromatic. Then change the layer mode to overlay and lower the opacity to somewhere between 10 and 20%. There's a lot of noise on the original poster, so for this one, we'll go with 20%. Lovely jubbly. And with that, we're almost ready to reveal the final image. So 
So here's the final image. I've added all the titles and texts just to give us an even better comparison. I wasn't too satisfied with the fire, so I've made a few adjustments there, but overall I think we've got a fairly decent comparison and hopefully we've managed to capture some of the qualities of the original poster. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to like the video and let me know what classic posters you'd like to see Legofied in the comments below. And if you want more Photoshop content, be sure to check out my last video, Photoshop Roulette, where I make a spaceship out of a laptop. Until next time.